You are now tuned in to the God Goals and Girl Talk podcast, where we discuss living for the kingdom of God while living in the culture. I'm your host, Charlotte Walker. I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner, wife, daughter, sister, auntie, and friend. And I am on the journey of producing and fulfilling every purpose that God saw for me before the beginning of time. And I want you on this journey with me. Each week, we are going to discuss how to apply God's word to our everyday lives. Get ready for some word, some gems, and a few laughs along the way. Now let's start the show. This episode of the God Goals and Girl Talk podcast is brought to you by The Society. The Society is our online community for women of faith who are looking for a safe space to be encouraged, educated, and empowered. The Society is hosted by myself, Tatum Tamia of the Blessed and Bossed Up podcast, Kavaya Watrice of the She Who Is Called app, and Rosalind Renee of the Therapy as a Christian podcast. Y'all look. This community is so rich and it really has something for everyone. If you're an entrepreneur, Tatum has business trainings every month and has built an amazing resource library. And almost every month we have a number of like funding opportunities and all of this just wonderful information together. We even have a place for us to share our businesses so we can work with each other. If you are struggling with time management and productivity, Rosalind's going to snatch you together, okay? She does these Monday productivity minutes that have been blessed in my life. If you're looking for practical ways to walk by faith, Kavaya is out here dropping big gems. And of course, I'm out here teaching live Bible studies every two weeks. And that don't even touch our quarterly challenges, corporate fasts, live events, and so much more. One thing I've learned about the society is that given the opportunity, we are always going to glorify God and we always going to go to brunch. Okay, we be brunching out here. Houston be turning up. Atlanta be turning up. Up, okay, like we are out here glorifying God, Bibles and brunch. Okay, so if you are in need of a safe space of like minded women of faith, start your two week free trial of the society today by clicking the link in the show notes or going to www.blessedandbossedupsociety.com. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the God Goals and Girl Talk podcast. I am so excited to talk about this week's topic. I'm always excited when I come on the podcast, especially when God gives me a particular assignment or revelation to share with his people like, oh, chow, get ready. Okay. Now, before we get started, I just want to thank everybody who was a part of our relationship refresh challenge. It was phenomenal. I'm actually going to share some of the revelation that I received with y'all this month from the Relationship Refresh Challenge because it's something that I feel like everybody needs to know. But if you were not there, girl, be there next time, child, because it was amazing. So shout out to all of our amazing speakers. Shout out to everyone who is now a member of the society. Even if you just joined us for the challenge, like I'm just so grateful and overwhelmed with the work that God did in that space. Um, We had people rededicating their life to Christ. We took communion. Like It was so phenomenal to see God moving, people having and rebuilding relationship with God. It just was everything that it was supposed to have been. It was given what it was supposed to have gave. So I am just so grateful that God moved in such a way and allowed me to be part in it. So I'm excited to see what our challenge is this quarter, but girl, the relationship refresh challenge was giving, okay? Okay. So today's episode is entitled, How to Walk in Your God-Given Authority. And this is something that God gave to me a while back, and I just have really, in the last couple of months, learned why the enemy attacks our authority so much. And so I want to introduce this topic of authority And I want us to really take a deep dive into what God is saying. So today really is going to be a lot more of like straight up, this is what the word says, and let's get some commentary behind it. I'm not going to put a lot of my own feelings and thoughts, but there are three things that is required for you to walk in authority. And we're going to talk about each one of those today. Okay. So first, 
Let's just even talk about what authority is for those of you who don't know. And then I'm going to give you my scripture that I'm referencing, which is Luke 10, 19. So authority is the power to act operating in our designated jurisdiction. Okay. And the Greek word that where authority comes from, it refers to the authority that God gives to his saints, authorizing us to act to the extent that we are guided by his faith or his revealed word. Okay. And we are able to do that through his power. And there's different kinds of power that's talked about in the Bible, but particularly I want us to know about dunamis power. Okay. This is God's mighty power. And I'm going to put a link in the show notes so you can look up this word dunamis, but dunamis power is what we get from God. Dunamis power is how we get our authority. And dunamis power means for the believer, it is our power to achieve by applying the Lord's inherent abilities. So it's power through God's ability. And the way that we get that is through a relationship with God. Okay. So authority is us operating in our designated jurisdiction. And this refers to God authorizing us to act in the extent that we are guided by our faith through his revelation that he gives to us. And we do it with dunamis power, which is our power that we get from God through his ability. So God is the source and he allows us the power or access to his power so that we can go out and exert or usurp our authority over the enemy. Okay. Y'all with me? Great. Now, why is this important? Because I'm going to read from Luke 10, 19, where Jesus is talking to the disciples and he's speaking about the level of authority that he has given to us. Okay. And it says, look, I have given you the authority over all the power of the enemy. That means everything that the enemy tries, we have all of the power over him. We have everything we need to defeat anything that he sends our way. I have given you all power over the enemy and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them nothing will injure you. And so it's so important to understand first, when we talk about walking in our God-given authority, understanding what that means. Authority means that we are walking in power. Authority means that we are walking by faith and not by sight. Authority means that we have access to God's power. And so it's not about what I can do in my own strength, but it's about me relying on God and tapping into him and his word because that's where all of my authority and power come from. And too often we shrink back and we don't do the things that God has called us to do, not because we don't have access to the power, but because we forget that the power that we are using is dunamis power. It's not our own power. So when God tells you to go do something, you tell him that you can't because you don't feel equipped, but you aren't going to be equipped. God is going to cover you and provide you with what you need. He's going to give you everything that you need to complete the assignment. You don't have it all by yourself. That is the point. The point is that we ain't got it and you don't even have to have it because once you link up with the Holy Spirit, once you link up with God, then you have everything that you need because you now have access to this dunamis power and you're going to use that to enact your authority. And so it's so important that you understand that the authority that is given to you has come to us through Jesus Christ. You don't just have authority just because, but we are walking in authority that has been given to us because of Jesus. And when you understand that, it takes a lot of the pressure off of you for what you think that you have to bring to the table outside of your faith and your obedience. You ain't got to bring nothing else to the table. When you look in the Bible, even at Abraham, God talks about that he came into covenant with Abraham and gave him all of these sons and daughters. And like, we're his sons and daughters. He gave him this inheritance based on his faith alone. God honored his faith. So all you have to bring to the table is your faith. And a lot of times we lack that. And so if you feel like you're struggling with walking in authority, you have to ask yourself, where is your faith? Where have you placed it? Have you placed it in money? Have you placed it in your job? Have you placed it in yourself? Are you busy fulfilling your own life and your own goals and doing your own things 
and you're wondering why you're not able to walk in God-given authority, well, you're not walking with God. And that brings me to my first point, okay? The first point of this is I want you to understand that authority requires relationship because the authority that we have is not on our own volition, but it is a benefit of being in relationship with Christ. And authority is available to all of us. That means that no one is left out. But the issue, especially in Christian culture, is that we idolize people who, like us, are just mere humans, that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But we idolize these people and we want to believe that they have some kind of secret or inaccessible power that we don't. And the devil is a lie because it says all that the authority has been given to us all to overcome all of the things that the enemy throws our way. Because God is no respecter of person. He doesn't play favorites. But Christian culture will tell you that you need to go over here and pay this person X, Y, and Z dollars to get a word from God. But God will speak to you directly if you are in relationship with him. And the issue is that we often do not have access to the power because we don't want to do the work that's required to build authentic relationship with God. We want to go around and we want to appear to be in relationship with God. We want to take pictures and put him on our Instagram using scriptures and things like that, but we're not really spending quality time with him. He's the last thing that we think about. We expect him to continue to bless us and to carry us and do all of these things, which he will because his grace and mercy are sufficient. But there's no way that we can think that we're out here living our best life and you're neglecting your relationship with God. And people don't think that it's that deep, but actually it is. The enemy is coming to steal, kill, and destroy. And you think that you're going to find what you're looking for. Our flesh is so quickly satisfied and distracted by all of these other things, TikTok, Instagram, music, TV shows. You're trying to numb the pain instead of you getting in relationship with God. So not only will he heal you, but he'll give you the authority to stop the source of the pain of the issue. And so it's so critical that we quit sleeping on our relationship with God. It's so critical that we understand that going into this next season, it is not going to be acceptable for you to have some lackadaisical relationship with God and expect to be able to go out and do mighty things because God is not going to put you in a position where you are going to fail. So if you are only doing the bare minimum, you reap what you sow, including in your relationship with God. If you're not sowing seeds by faith, then you're not going to see a return on your investment. And so if you're feeling drained, if you're feeling like you're spiraling, if you're feeling like you're sitting on the sidelines, it's because you are not in relationship. I dare you to do an audit on your relationship with God. And I guarantee you, sis, that you're not spending the kind of quality time that you think that you are. And God even had to get on me with this. As we continue to go from faith to faith and glory to glory, he is going to require more of you. He's going to require more because there's going to be even more spiritual warfare. And so before you ask God to give you more, you need to make sure that you're in right relationship with him. So that way you have access to the power and the authority that's going to be required at this new level. You can't be lackadaisical when you start praying and asking God to give you a platform because there are lives and souls attached to this. The Bible talks about the weight of and the way that people who teach and preach are going to be judged. There's a different level of judgment. And because you're out here doing what God has called you to do, then the enemy is going to throw all kinds of attacks your way. A lot of times people don't understand because you see the highlight reel, but you don't understand the hell that goes on in the background with a lot of these leaders who are truly leading and truly doing the things of God, not these people out here for play play, because it's a lot of them, but the people who are truly leading and doing the things of God, the enemy is always, always out here sending attacks because he wants to knock us off of our post. And some of us, some of y'all even listening to this show are prayer warriors. Some of y'all have been called to do great things in God's kingdom, but you're so busy worried about yourself, thinking small, thinking about what you want to do and what makes you feel good, that you're not willing to do the work to save the souls that God has called to you. And so when we talk about authority, I'm going to stand 10 toes down in my authority and tell y'all to wake up because we are getting too close. If you don't see what's happening in the land and you do not understand that it's time for you to get on your post, sis, let's quit playing games. No, it's not fun. Yes, it's difficult. Yes, you have to give things up. 
But is God not worth it? The God that you claim that you love? You love TV more than you love God. You love Instagram more than you love God. You love your kids more than you love God, which is still out of order. And so you're going to find yourself always being depleted, always finding yourself being impacted and taken down and in bondage because you're not treading on the heads of serpents and snakes, but you're allowing them to coil around you and gather you whole. And so when we talk about authority, you have to, have to be in relationship with God. There is no way that you can do the things that God has called you to do absent of him. There are people out here who are out here teaching and preaching and prophesying because they're not prophesying and they have no power attached to what they're saying. They have no authority because it's not by my own authority that I get on this podcast and teach. It's by the authority of Jesus Christ. So I don't have any kind of care about what people have to say about the topics that I discuss because this isn't even my show. It's God's show. So whatever God says to do, that's what's going to happen. If he says, get on here and talk about authority, this isn't no magic potion. You're going to have to open your Bible and spend time with God. That's it. We cannot be out here relying more on leadership than we do God. Yes, godly leadership is important. Yes, wise counsel is important. But some of y'all love y'all pastors more than y'all love God. And then when your pastor fall off and he's doing things that are not of God, nobody comes in and checks him because you want to honor the man of God. But first of all, do we not honor God first? Because this is his house. We have to understand that there are people out here that are pimping people (laughs) pimping the people of God, having them paying for prophecy and prayer and deliverance and all of this stuff Jesus said that we can have. He died for it. Are we serious? We have to get in relationship with God for ourselves. There are too many things out here, too many resources out here for us to be playing games. At this point, because God says that we have the victory over all of the things of the enemy, if you feel like you're losing, It's because you're making a decision to lose because you have to put the work in to get the results that you want. So if you want to walk in authority, then you need to be in relationship with the one who gives the authority. Because when I come to speak, I speak on the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I don't know about nobody else, but that's where my authority comes from. This ain't just because Charlotte wants to speak about this. No, the authority that I have, the conviction that I have, The power that I have that's been attached to this show comes only through the Holy Spirit because of my relationship with Jesus Christ. That's how we do it. And so if you're not seeing the results in your life, then you're not going to be able to continue on the path that you're on. If you're not seeing the results that you want, then it's time for you to do something different. We are at the halfway point of the year. We are entering quarter three. There is still time. But what happens is, is that after the beginning of the year, we lose steam. Some of us have gotten too comfortable with God and we've gone from being comfortable to being complacent. And the complacency is going to kill you. The enemy is devouring you. The enemy is is devouring your children. The enemy is snuffing out the assignment, not because he can, but because we're allowing it, because we refuse to walk in our authority. So that's the first point. Authority requires relationship. This episode of the God Goals and Girl Talk podcast is brought to you by Audible. Y'all, I absolutely love Audible. One of my goals this year was to read more books. And honestly, it's just difficult with my schedule, with me just being busy and just honestly not having the attention span to be able to sit down and read books. But Audible has come to my rescue. I have been enjoying Audible really for a number of years, but recently have been just really taking advantage of the app. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre from bestsellers to new releases, celebrity memoirs, I'm talking motivation, wellness, um, spiritual business. And what I love is that oftentimes Audible will have the top celebrities or experts reading their books in their own words. Barack's The Promised Land is chef's kiss fire, listening to him discuss all of the challenges that he faced during his presidency. I also love that every month I'm able to select one new title to bring into my library. And so it gives me the option to to read and experience books that I may not have experienced picking them up myself. 
The Audible app makes it so easy to listen anytime, anywhere. I listen on a plane. I've listened literally this morning, listening to Atomic Habits as I'm working out. It has been amazing. And new members get to experience Audible for 30 days for free. So if you want to elevate your life through books, okay, don't have me start singing reading rainbow, sis. You want to go over to www audibletrial.com slash G-G-G-T, like God Goes and Girl Talk, to start your 30-day free trial today. Again, that's www.audibletrial.com slash G-G-G-T to start your free 30-day trial today. Now let's get back to the show. The second, authority requires assignment, okay? And when we look at Luke 10, 19, And we talk about Jesus saying that we can tread on snakes and scorpions. The word in the Greek, pateo, it means to encounter successfully the greatest perils and mechanisms and persecutions with which Satan would put towards our way when we go out to preach the gospel. That means that I have the authority to overcome even the greatest schemes of the enemy when we are out here on assignment. Authority requires an assignment. And so if you're looking for your authority in God, I would ask you if you are looking for the power for your glory or for God's glory. Because when we walk in authority, we have to be on assignment for God. And I talk about the story about the sons of Sceva, and they're a really good reference to this. And I'm going to drop the link in the show note about the story. But essentially, there was this priest and his son saw the apostles casting out demons with this authority that God had gave them or Jesus had gave them. And they were like, oh, I'm going to go do that. So they go over and they see a man that's possessed and they say, I cast you out by the name of Jesus, which whom Paul speaks about. And the demon said, Paul, I know Jesus, I know. But who are you? And these seven sons of Sceva ended up bloody and naked after they tried to exercise authority for their own glory. And they were sons of a priest. So it's not like they weren't used to a religious space. But the lesson is that when we go out, we need to make sure that we are looking for God to be glorified and not us. Because if you go out looking to be glorified, you're going to get your head busted instead. Pride cometh before the fall. And so to truly walk in authority, we must be on assignment for God. That means that you can't be out here trying to pimp God into blessing you with stuff that he already wants to give you, but your heart ain't right. And that goes back to relationship. When I'm on assignment for God, I do this because God has called me to do this, period. I do whatever God has called me to do. It don't always make sense. I don't always feel like doing it. I don't always have the strength to show up. But when I tap into my own authority, I'm going to always fall short. But when I tap into the authority that Jesus has given me through the Holy Spirit, I can pull up like this. I am tired today. (laughs) This is not what I wanted to do. I am being obedient to my assignment. And as soon as I open my mouth on this microphone, God has given me the authority to speak. And so this is the episode that y'all is getting. But my flesh, my flesh was like, no, girl, you ain't even got to do it, girl. Mm -mm, Girl, it's a holiday weekend, girl. No, sis, Uh uh-uh, I'm on assignment. And the assignment isn't for my glory, it's for God's glory. And because of that, who am I to not show up when my father calls? What? No, ma'am. So you need to understand that you will not access authority, true authority, sitting on the sidelines, especially Christians. We get so caught up in ourselves. I'm trying to do this so God will bless me with X, Y, and Z. Who are you helping? Who are you saving? Are you loving your neighbor or are you only concerned about yourself? When I think about not doing this podcast, I think about the people who need to hear from God and God has graced me and put me in position to be able to be that voice. So if I don't show up or if I don't show up well, if I show up haphazardly, what impact does that have on them? Who am I to do that to God's children, to y'all? Uh-uh, I don't need no smoke with God. So when we talk about authority, you cannot be on the sidelines or be trying to walk your own path and think that you're going to get authority from God to do whatever you want to do. No, ma'am, that's not even how that works. We have to actively pursue God and righteous living. If you are not pursuing God, that means that you're not taking time to study your word, 
truly study your word, to pray, to fast, to do the things that God has called you to do. Girl, you just out here on your own for no reason. You playing games. And no one else, no matter how much they want it for you, no one else can do this for you. You have to decide that enough is enough and I'm ready to give my life over to God. I'm done being lukewarm. I'm not about to sit on the sidelines. I want to be in true relationship with God and I'm going to walk this thing out. Yes, it's hard. Yes, you can get weary and well-doing, but what you do is you get in community with people. You make sure that you're under proper leadership and you have covering and you quit playing and you go be about your father's business. But so many of us want the blessings of God. You want the promise, but without the principle. You want the promise, but you don't want the principle. God promises that we can have a lot of things, but then the principle is obedience. And that means that there, we're lacking love because the Bible tells us, if you love me, then you'll obey my commandment. So if you're not being obedient to God, I will question your love for him. And this goes all the way back to relationship. There is nothing that we can do outside of God. We read that in John 15, 5. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So you may be busy, but you're not really building. <laughs> Because if you're not sitting in God's face, you cannot do anything that is going to be substantiated or that's going to be impactful in the kingdom. And that means that we're wasting time. And who's got time for that? Not me. We really want to talk about walking in authority. You need to make sure that you are in relationship with God. You need to make sure that you are on assignment. And the last thing is that you need to understand that authority requires revelation. And the only way that you get that is through God. You need to have revelation. When we talk about our enemy, this is someone who is openly hostile, animated by deep-seated hatred. This means that there's an irreconcilable hostility out of a personal hatred bent on inflicting harm. This is who our adversary is. And we get so complacent in securing our own salvation But the enemy is after your children. And because you feel like you're, oh, I'm tired, I'm this, I'm that, you'll give every excuse for that. But then the stuff that you want to do, we magically find the energy to do it. And I'm not saying this in a way of condemnation, but the truth is the truth because I've been guilty. Like, oh, you can find all the time to scroll on TikTok, but you ain't been in here doing X, Y, and Z. And there's a time and a place for us to chill, but some of us go beyond chill and we become complacent. You ain't talked to God in 50 million 11 days past. Hey God, you can't even show up to prayer. You don't even come to free challenges. It's free. But because there's a level of inconvenience in your schedule, then you won't do it. But we find ways to do things that we feel like are of importance to us. And so there's just this part of me that's really hitting in my spirit today that's like, girl, whose side are you on? Are you on the enemy side? Because if you're not actively working toward the things of God, then you're helping the enemy. Whose side are you on? You want authority to do what? To scroll on TikTok. To do what? <laughs> like, to, to do what? Why do you need God's authority to do that? We have to have revelation. We have to be able to see and have discernment and understand the things that God is trying to show us. The enemy is very, very crafty, but to know that you have all power over everything that he throws at you, the fact that you are dealing with all of these shenanigans. And all of this foolishness, and you have not yet decided that you were going to stand 10 toes down in the authority that God is giving you because it's inconvenient. I mean, well, wow, it's a choice at this point. We have to have revelation. We have to know that the enemy is out to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to plant seeds of sexual immorality, depression, division. He's trying to kill your kids, but you're busy, you know doing whatever else. And authority requires that we understand that the war is spiritual and it requires for you to be well-trained in your primary offensive weapon. The only weapon that we have is the word of God. That is our authority. That's where our power comes from. When you look at the armor of God, the only thing that we have that is an offensive weapon Everything else is to protect us. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate, the belt of truth, the shoes of peace. All of those things are protective, defensive weapons. Our shield of faith that puts out the fiery darts of the enemy. But our offensive weapon, our sword, is God's word. 
because that's where our authority comes from. And so the lack of interest in you studying God's word is a tactic that the enemy will use to keep you in the line of fire and outside of walking in your authority. It's not by happenstance that it just seems so inconvenient, but are you going to allow your flesh to choke you out? Are you going to allow your flesh to impart generational curses? Are you going to allow your flesh to be the reason as to why your kids and your grandkids aren't free from things that have been running in your family? Or are we going to do the work? So when you talk about authority, when you talk about the accessing the power of God, you have to have relationship, you have to be on assignment for God, and you have to have revelation. I know that this episode, I was coming for souls, but that was my assignment today. So I pray that y'all really understand the urgency behind this, that you understand how the enemy is trying to keep you bound and outside of the will of God because we want to be lazy and think that we're going to live lavishly. No, it's just not going to work that way. You are going to have to do things that you don't want to do. And in a world where a culture will tell you to only do what makes you happy, that is going to keep you bound and on your way straight to hell. You are never going to access the authority of God doing only what you want to do, following your feelings. It's no longer acceptable in this season. If you cannot open your eyes and turn on the news and see how the enemy is running rampant in this land, and there are people who claim that they love God, but you're not willing to do the things of God. So that way that we can go out with the dunamis power and usurp our authority and take back the land that God has given us. Girl, it's not a game. So. That's it for this week's episode. I love y'all. I pray that y'all take heed to this message. I pray that y'all really truly understand what God is doing in this time and that you are not afraid to walk in authority, that you do what's required to walk in authority in this season. There are people that are counting on you to take your assignment. Can you imagine if Jesus didn't get on the cross? What our lives would be like. So I love y'all. God bless y'all. And I will talk to y'all next week. This episode of the God Goals and Girl Talk podcast is brought to you by GrantStation. GrantStation is your fast track to funding, and it is a dynamic tool to help nonprofit organizations find grant opportunities, build strong grant programs, and they literally walk you through writing a grant proposal. I love Grant Station. Okay. They have some amazing tools and resources that literally change the game for our organization. The first time I wrote a grant, I got a 35 out of 100. What? <laughs> I was like, I don't get ifs. After using the tools and resources at Grant Station, my last grant proposal came back and I had an 89 out of 100, and we were in the final considerations for a substantial federal grant. I absolutely love. GrantStation. One of my favorite features about GrantStation is that they walk you through their R3 system, which is revenue, review, and report. And the process ensures that your organization is not only ready to receive the grant, but able to properly manage the grant as well. Listeners of this podcast can start finding and securing grants through our exclusive partnership with GrantStation. I want you to use the link in the show notes to get access to our GrantStation databases, training, resources, and more for only $95 for the year. Y'all, $95 for the year. Now look, my first year with GrantStation, we paid almost $200, okay? I think the membership is like $170 a year. Using our discount code, you are able to secure it for $95. So if you are ready to get your startup working towards securing grant funding, make sure that you click the link in the show notes and sign up for GrantStation today. GrantStation, your fast track to funding. 
I pray you guys enjoyed this week's episode. Make sure you stay connected with us throughout the week by following us over on Instagram at God Goals and Girl Talk, hitting us up on Twitter at GGGT Podcast, and checking out our website, www.godgoalsandgirltalk.com. The website is lit. It has a free resource library, and you can search podcast episodes based on topics, all the things, okay? So until next week, continue to love God, love people, and love yourselves. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye.